Hi. What I would like to achieve with this video is that you understand how Rode's Unify app may just be groundbreaking for your audio recording and streaming workflow, but also for those using the Rodecaster series consoles, the original, the Rodecaster Duo, or the Rodecaster Pro 2. But to get there, I need to first talk about a specific microphone. I do realize it's a little weird to start what is essentially a software review by talking about a microphone, but this is kind of where the whole story has started. Back in early 2020, when Rode has launched the anti-USB mini microphone, no one really cared. Another USB mic in the $100 price range, yes, it looks good, and it sounds okay, but there's nothing really special about it. One year passed by with the anti-USB mini on the market, when Rode has made a really smart move by releasing the Rode Connect software as a free accompaniment to his then one year and two months old anti-USB mini microphone in April 2021. Not only did it enhance the sound of the mic with the noise gate, with the compressor, and with the Aphex big bottom and oral exciter signal processors, others have done similar things like the Shure MV7, albeit with different processors and for over two times the price, but Rode Connect also made possible to connect up to four anti-USB mini mics to the same computer at the same time, which was simply revolutionary. This was a capability that so far you could only achieve with paid software in the $100 price range whereas Rold Connect was free, although it only worked with the anti-USB mini, which is a $99 microphone. What the product owners at Rode have also realized is that not all wannabe podcasters are audio nerds who know how to record audio and who have their favorite multi-track audio recording software readily installed and trained. Instead, they've built a recorder right into Rode Connect, so you could just press the big red record button, actually it's green, but it turns red, <laughs> and your audio was recorded even on separate audio tracks, for each input, if you wish to do so. In Rode Connect, it was as easy as a drop-down selection in the settings and pressing record. And from that point onwards, it became ridiculously easy and cheap to record a podcast with up to four participants present and with two remote guests using Rode Connect's two virtual channels called System and Virtual, as they had automatic Mix Minus applied to them. You didn't even have to know what Mix Minus is, you just had to set the Rode Connect system or Rode Connect Virtual as the audio source for your communication app, and it worked. It was, and actually it still is, hassle-free, turnkey solution, and it lowered the barrier to enter into podcasting to mere $100, assuming you had a PC or a Mac. No one even came close to this, to this day. No one offers even remotely similar functionalities to their USB mics, like connecting multiple mics to the same computer, Recording in multi-track, normalizing audio exports to target loudness, and the inclusion of sound pads are unparalleled amongst microphone and company and software. And this made the Rode NT-USB Mini sell like hotcakes one year after its launch, obviously. And it also differentiated Rode's later USB mics for being yet another USB mic to being powerhouse recording devices. These now include, beside the NT-USB Mini, also the NT-USB Plus, the VideoMic NTG, the Wireless Go 2, the Wireless Me, the Wireless Pro, the VideoMic Go 2, the PodMic USB, the NT1 5th Gen, and anything you connect to it via the AI Micro interface. Still, Road Connect was not perfect. It was and remains a standalone software that is not in interplay with Rode's hardware, other than compatible microphones, of course. It only offered those two virtual audio devices, so you were limited in how to route software audio to different channels, and it only had a single output mix. What you've heard in your headphones was the same that was sent out from Rode Connect, versus the Go XLR and the Elgato Wavelink have offered more advanced capabilities in this regard. Specifically to streamers, which was a community that Rode wanted to convince to use Rode products instead of the products of the aforementioned competitors. To cater for this community, they have launched a new sub-brand called Rodex with a distinctive black and red design and with specific focus on streamers. This sub-brand had a shorter lifespan than the clumsiest secret service field agent, by the way. Meanwhile, it has silently disappeared from Rode's website and materials, more or less. It's just Rode again, streamer or not. Alongside their first two products, a condenser mic and a dynamic USB mic, they have introduced the Unify software, which is essentially Rode Connect on steroids. After a few back and forths, they also made it free, but limited to certain Rode microphones. And what Unify can do with your audio is mind-blowing. And it finally interplays with the Rodecaster series too. Let's have a look. Just like in Rode Connect, you can still plug in four compatible USB mics into the same computer. These now include every mic that's compatible with Rode Connect, excluding the wireless me, 
plus the ones that were originally dedicated for Rodex, the XCM50 and the XDM100 and the PodMic USB, and it is still a recorder that is capable of recording in multitrack so that every input channel gets recorded to its own separate audio file, as well as it can still do the exporting to target loudness, but now instead of two, it has six different USB input channels that you can assign to any software that lets you assign its audio. So you can have browser, chat, music and game audio going into their own channels while retaining the system and virtual channels on top of the four mic inputs. This is already a huge improvement, but it does not stop there. You can create five different submixes for the different outputs it creates. So you can have a different mix going into your stream and into your chat. And these are the ones you can also send out to different software as inputs. And on top of these, another different mix for your headphones, your monitors, and even for your recording. And this is exactly what streamers have been asking for. While the software looks clean and nice, it may be a little overwhelming at first sight, but it's actually very logical. It has four main sections, a header, a mixer, sound pads, and control outputs. Starting at the header from the right, here you have the hamburger menu with some main settings. And while at the first startup, the software prompts you to set up your inputs, once they are set up, Here's where you can go back to the channel assignment page. This works by dragging the available audio channels from the bottom to the top row. Then you can assign these audio inputs to whichever software allows you to do so, on Mac that is, on Windows you can actually assign whatever software to whichever input because Windows has a built-in audio management the system mixer, which is much better than what you have on the Mac. And there you go, you can now control all of their volumes in the mixer in the middle. You also have preferences there, where most importantly, you can switch on multi-track recording, which I absolutely recommend, as it not only saves the stereo mix, like the stereo recording, but then also the individual channels separately as well. And if you are doing a podcast or re-uploading your stream as a separate content, it can be a lifesaver in post-production that you can individually cut and process every audio channel. The header, as you will see, is very much a view selector. You can choose what you are looking at in the software. This next toggle, for example, switches between the mixer view and the recording window, where you can listen back to and generally manage your recordings you've made in Unify. On Windows, you would get another button here, which is the audio routing that essentially is a shortcut to the Windows system mixer, something that you unfortunately do not have on a Mac. Neither the button in Unify nor the advanced audio routing capability of the system mixer, Windows is just more advanced in this regard. We'll stay in the mixer view, as that's where the magic happens. Then moving to the middle, you have your main output level meters, unfortunately without the decibel scale as of now, and we'll come back in a second what this field does below it as it actually belongs to the next section, which would be the mixer section. But before we get there, still in the header, you can trigger the recording and once recording, also a blue flag icon appears and pushing that will place markers in the recording if you want. The recording capability is often overlooked as a competitive advantage, whereas in my view, this was the first combined with the multi-track ability to drill the hole in the wall that separated professional podcasters from audio amateurs who wanted to become podcasters. Remember how Road Connect has lowered the entry barriers? There's no easier way to make quality multi-track recording on any computer as of now than using either Road Connect or Unify. Next is the mixer section where you see all your inputs, including the sound pads that are assigned to a channel by default. And the field below the main level meters is where the first magic happens. This is the drop down which lets you select which output you are seeing in the mixer section. You can mix separately the stream mix. This is your main mix. So this should be your input into your streaming service. Then the chat mix, which is not surprisingly meant to be the input to your chat application. Here you have a classic mix minus setup in which the chat input doesn't go right back into the chat output to avoid that the chat participants hear their own voice back. For both of these mixes, stream and chat, you have an individual virtual audio input automatically created upon installing Rode Unify. And these are the Rode Unify stream and the Rode Unify chat. You can select them as a sound input in any application that lets you do that. And whatever mix you are setting up for them by selecting stream or chat in the dropdown will be fed into those inputs and consequently into the application you have selected them for audio input. Now I said they were meant for stream and chat respectively, but it is not carved in stone. You can change it and use it for whatever you want. You can freely enable or disable channels going into this mix. And this is true for all these different outputs and their mixes, which include going forward the recording mix, which as the name suggests, determines what you are going to record. You can, for example, set everything irrespective of the actual stream mix to unity level. 
and then you'll tweak channel volumes flexibly in post. Then you can have a separate headphone mix and a separate monitor output mix, which will come in very handy in just a minute. But before that, one important thing. First, the headphone mix is what's going into the headphone output below in the last section in the control output part. And this is also where you can select which is your headphone from the available options, as most compatible USB mics will have a headphone output, so you'll need to select which one you are using. And by the way, you can create a different headphone mix for each headphone, should there be more than one connected through the headphone ports of the USB mics. Similarly, the monitor mix that you set in the mixer section will go to the control output's other output marked with the speaker. Second, and that's more important, if you click on these buttons, either on the headphone or on the speaker, you mute them, which is indicated by the disappearing white circle around the buttons. This is not really intuitive, so just note that if you're not hearing anything, the first step of troubleshooting should be to check if there's a white circle around them, which would indicate that they are not muted. Easy way to remember where you select what. The upper drop-down is the look, and the bottom drop-downs are the here. So with the drop-down at the top, you are selecting the mix that you are looking at in the mixer window, and with the drop-downs at the bottom, you are selecting what you are hearing in either the headphones or in the control output. Rode has great video tutorials, by the way, on how to use all these features. I'll link some of them below if you want to deep dive. What Rode did not tell us, however, is how you can integrate all these powerful solutions into their hardware consoles, the Rodecaster Pro 2 and the Rodecaster Duo, whereas this opens up a whole new world of possibilities, even if it is not yet a Polish solution, which is probably why Rode hasn't ever mentioned it in any materials, although I think it is just a matter of time, even though Unify is meant to complement the Streamer X 4K in the first place, but it doesn't mean that it is limited to that. Let's say you connect to the Rodecaster, either the Pro 2 or the Duo, via the USB 1 port into your computer. It means that you will have virtual audio input and output on your computer called Rodecaster Pro 2 Main or Rodecaster Duo Main, respectively. All you need now is to go to the monitoring output section below in Unify and set the monitor output to this Rodecaster Main. Select the mix that you want to go in there, like the stream mix, and boom, you have your Unify stream mix going right into the USB 1 input on the Rodecaster, which effectively solves the major complaint that streamers had that the Rodecaster only had three possible USB channels, the main, the chat, and the secondary. We've just expanded the USB 1 input channel to include potentially four more USB mics and six different USB sources from your computer. Granted, you can only control the joint input from the hardware, but you are free to mix it however you like on the computer. Unparalleled flexibility is what you get, and almost total control over your audio. Now there's inevitably some latency involved here, which means that the audio coming from Unify will hit the roadcaster with an ever so slight delay compared to, say, a mic that's plugged directly into it. How long this delay is will depend on the computer that you're using. With the M1 MacBook Pro, I've measured 40 milliseconds, which is audible, but not something that you couldn't work with, especially if you are recording speech or streaming. And here's how it sounds when I'm recording simultaneously into the SM7B that is plugged directly into the Rodecaster Duo on channel 1, and into the PodMic USB that is running into Unify, and coming back to the Rodecaster Duo on the USB 1 channel, because I have set the monitor to the stream mix and going out into the Rodecaster Duo main, which is USB 1. As a disclaimer, I need to mention here that the latency was noticeably worse on a low-performance mini PC I've tried it on being at 89 milliseconds, which is very much audible and disturbing, so how well this works depends very much on your computer. And here's how that sounds. So, so here's, here's how, how it sounds, sounds like when I'm recording simultaneously into the SM7B, that is connected to the Rodecaster Duo directly, and into the NT1 5th gen, that is going into Unify, which then is routed back into the Rodecaster Duo. So that's the latency using a very weak hardware in a Windows Mini PC. When it comes to competition, the closest contender that is both available on Windows and Mac would be the Elgato Wavelink, but it has no recording feature and consequently no true multitrack output or exporting to target loudness level or sound pads, but you can control it with a Stream Deck and you can apply VST effects plugins. This you don't have in Unify, but in exchange, it basically replicates the voice processing that you have in the Rodecaster series, especially if you're using it in conjunction with the Streamer X, which are pretty solid and probably more than enough. 
you have a high pass filter to cut out low frequency noises, a noise gate, a compressor, and the two advanced audio enhancers, the big bottom for the depth and the oral exciter for the articulation in the treble frequencies. And they are pretty easy to set up, even in the advanced mode, as you have a live display about what's happening to the audio, like here with the noise gate. You can see when I'm talking that the audio indicator is moving and you see exactly when it drops below the gate threshold. So you can pull it down lower or adjust it to be more aggressive if you prefer so. Same with the compressor. Now if you get the Wave XLR interface from Elgato, then you could use Wavelink with any XLR microphone, not only with USB mics. And this is the advantage that Rode has eliminated with the Streamer X4K, which even if it's three times as expensive, but it can do the same and a lot more as it works with Unify, and besides your audio, it also takes care of your video feed as a capture card, and retains the dual plug-and-play USB connectivity that the second generation of the Rodecaster series has, along with native wireless mic connectivity. The only remaining advantage of Wavelink as of mid-2023 is that on a Mac, you get the essence of the powerful audio routing capabilities of Rogue Amoba's loopback software, which is a $100 paid software, and with that you can freely route any software audio that's, that is open on your Mac to a different USB input in Wavelink. This is not currently possible in Unify on Mac. On Windows, it works just fine with the system mixer. All in all, it was a super smart move back then from Rode to offer Rode Connect to some of their mics. The competition has, to this very day, nothing like it, and Unify takes it to the next level while retaining the distinctive features of Rode Connect that no one else has, which are allowing to use multiple USB microphones on the same computer, sound pads, multi-track recording and exporting audio to target loudness. But with six USB channels in Unify versus only two in Rode Connect, plus more advanced routing and submixes. Now what remains to be seen is how Rode will first of all solve assigning different software audio to specific USB channels on Mac, for instance they could develop it in-house or get a group rate or something from Rogue Amoeba like Elgato did. It would be interesting to see how Rode plans to further integrate the Unify software's capabilities with the Rodecaster consoles, for which, while it does work today already, the current downside is that you need to control the USB mixes on the computer screen and the hardware mixes on the Rodecaster, so on two different surfaces. But even today, it is an amazing, very advanced and free solution that works with most recent Rode microphones with a USB functionality. With that, thanks for watching and bye for now.